Welcome to a noob's guide to Elspeth von Draken. This is Elspeth von Draken, Magistrix of the Amethyst Order, Dark Lady of Nuln, and your new favorite dark magic dummy mommy. Because one thing evil Elsa here won't be letting go of is her vice-like grip on the Empire's balls. In this video, we'll go over Elspeth's lore and how that's been translated to gameplay in Total War Warhammer 3, as well as the new units in her DLC and how you'll be using them to lurk around graveyards and protect the Empire. Elspeth von Draken is a dark wizard, which is not the same as a 30-year-old virgin in an unlit room. Her studies of the amethyst winds of Shaish give her mastery over death and make her exactly as dangerous as a woman who wears puffy garters, kiss makeup, and has a room full of skulls should be. For generations, the people of Nuln have avoided the cemetery at the edge of town where Elspeth lives. Grandparents fondly remember their own parents warning them not to be out too late, lest the Black Lady snatch them up faster than catfish at a fish fry. Which, now that they think about it, was actually kind of racist, but that was a long time ago and they're dead now. While Elspeth may look young, like Avril Lavigne in Evanescence, she's from ancient alternative history. You can tell because Elspeth's dressed as a goth. For our Gen Z viewers who don't know what that is, goths were an ancient tribe hailing from the distant land of Hot Topic that once sacked Rome in 410 AD, but a few can still be found in Montreal and Rammstein concerts. Older viewers may be aware of the fuzzy distinction between goth and emo and argue Elspeth's place on it. Paint your nails black? Could go either way. Black lingerie? Well, that's just a fun Friday night. But if you marry yourself to literal death in a black wedding dress, congratulations, you're a goth. Or in a Tim Burton film, the two are interchangeable. But she's definitely not a vamp. This distinction is important. Goths hate vamps. That's why Elspeth gets specific bonuses to help you wipe the blood-sucking sociopaths off the planet. She's immune to their attrition, nullifies their magical attacks, and even limits their healing. With a colony of the bat-eared leeches on your doorstep, your early game will always be clearing the empire of these deadbeats. The last thing she wants is to be confused with these blood-sucking sociopaths, because every year some overzealous witch hunter breaks into her tower and throws garlic water on her. And while dark magic is very good at making unwanted guests disappear, these attacks still leave her room smelling like an olive garden. The witch hunters aren't entirely wrong about her, though. Elspeth von Draken is part of an ancient bloodline of wizards with enough bad apples on the family tree that many wonder if the whole thing should be cut down. Balthazar Gelt, current patriarch of the Imperial Colleges of Magic, is so wary of von Draken's independence and power that he keeps agents tracking all her movements. He's never met her personally, but the reports are troubling. Supposedly, she's conquered death without a philosopher's stone and has been traveling around looking for all sort of kinky artifacts to shove in her dark chamber of secrets. Since graduating, she has never returned to the Imperial Colleges of Magic and has pointedly ignored their petty power politics, daily political coups, and repeated requests to join their alumni association. And these senior wizards breathe a sigh of relief as their uneasy truce of pretending the other one doesn't exist continues. As arguably the most powerful amethyst wizard of her age, Elspeth can cast Lore of Death spells more often and cheaper than any other Imperial wizard you can play as, with unique skills that improve her most devastating spells even further. An obsessive experimenter, every room in her tower is stuffed with grim tomes and shyish artifacts, all of which radiate death magic. Elspeth has become so saturated in the stuff that many wonder if she's even still human at all, with her perfect pallid skin, voluptuous body that hasn't aged in decades, and runny trash panda eyes that glow when you shine a light on her as she's digging through your trash for magical artifacts. The tower is also part of Elspeth's new Gardens of Moor mechanic. The Gardens of Moor are a fancy way of saying cemeteries, but in a world with necromancy, having a guarded location free of magic is a bit more important. Elspeth's Black Tower is on the edge of the garden, and in-game you can construct towers across friendly or neutral empire settlements, letting you and your army fast travel between them. You can also recruit special buildings in these gardens, which allow you to fight corruption or summon local elector troops. Think of them as a home away from home, if your home is a tomb where only black roses grow. Despite being a shut-away recluse, she's still a true scion of the Empire. The city of Nuln and the Church of Moor are both under her protection, and in turn, they've sworn to protect Elspeth from prying eyes and not ask too many questions about her research. Because when shit hits the fan, it's comforting to know you have a monster in your own corner. 
Dozens of conflicts have been reported through the years, but few make headlines, as Elspeth prefers to work in the shadows. That's why you have access to the Imperial Gunnery School in Elspeth's campaign. She has a vested interest in ensuring Nuln's readiness to tackle any threat. The Empire is said to be built on faith, steel, and gunpowder, and while Altdorf may provide the overzealous priest and presence for the meat grinder, it's Nuln that brings the combined arms assault necessary to tackle literal demons from another dimension. And with Elspeth, you'll recruit these guns cheaper and stronger than any other faction in the Empire. The Imperial Gunnery School is a long-standing institution that strives to advance the field of making things go boom. It boasts a fully developed military-industrial complex where you can sponsor lucrative defense contracts to research new and exciting ways to kill things. These upgrades are bought with schematics, a unique resource for Elspeth that you collect by using gunpowder units in battle and looting from your enemies. Each successive level is locked until you upgrade the gunnery school. This is accomplished by field testing your gunpowder units as a series of checklist quests that encourage you to use the units you've been tinkering with. The hassle is worth it, though, as the third and final upgrades add terrifying abilities like explosive bullets for gunners and grape shot for cannons. Advance the gunnery school enough and you'll gain access to the Amethyst Armory, where Elspeth forcibly rips souls out of the underworld and binds them into weapons to give them that extra bit of purple punch. It offers powerful single-use spells and elite Amethyst units. Amethyst units hit harder and have higher defense than your regular troops, as they're covered head-to-toe in lead-coated armor. Elspeth hasn't ever explained why that safety equipment is necessary, but she also doesn't stand too close to them when they fire their weapons. During the crisis of the invasion of Tamarkin, the generals of the city of Nuln were preparing to make a valiant and suicidal charge out of the city and directly into the Chaos Host's gaping maw. That's when Elspeth von Draken swooped into Nuln's war council like a specter of death itself. Most there had never even laid eyes on her before, dressed in a black gown of living darkness and holding a scythe so sharp it seemed to murder the still air. She informed everyone present that they would only be defending Nuln itself. Tamarkin could have all the fields and livestock, so long as the citizens were safe. You could have heard a pin drop at the suggestion of a tactical withdrawal, but nobody harumphed at the plan for fear of being turned into a newt. Meeting adjourned. By staying close to the city, Elspeth intended to minimize casualties and bring Nuln's full arsenal to bear on the walls, the same techniques you'll employ with her DLC units. Master engineers are quiet men who pursue progress through technology, but when their nation calls, they trade their pins for Patriot missiles and take up arms. This new lord option can lead your armies on mechanical steeds or ride in atop a steam tank screaming obscenities out of the hatch while firing a grenade launcher. Either way, master engineers expect you to lead follow, or get the hell out of the way. Engineer heroes are scientists whose work is yet to be appreciated or keeps getting stolen by their supervisors. They ride around doing support work for their masters and putting out fires, both literal and metaphorical, while using gadgets and gizmos aplenty. Like the master engineer, their biggest benefit to your army is their master of ballistics passive ability, which improves accuracy and reload speed for nearby artillery and war machines, as clearly what these cannon crews were lacking was a micromanaging supervisor hovering nearby. Nuln Ironsides are handgunners with better armor and better training than their Imperial counterparts, and that's why they get Black Powder Discipline, where if they stand still for a few seconds, they'll shoot faster and with more accuracy. But if you're worried having them stand still will also see them overrun faster than a pile of discount TVs on Black Friday, remember that extra armor and sword they carry aren't just fashion accessories. Hawkland Long Rifles take the opposite approach. Instead of being slow and ready for a slog, they're light, long-range specialists who wield one of the modern marvels of the Empire, Leon Toddmeister's fantabulously far-reach harquebus of unforeseeable and unperceived bereavement. Armies outside of Nuln have been slow to adopt these sharpshooter units, likely because they can never get the name right on the order. The Steam Tank has been a part of the Empire roster since day one, but Nuln has created the Volley Gun variant, which swaps the main gun for a triple-barreled revolving cannon. It swaps range for firepower and encourages you to put their cow catchers to good use and ram them up beastmen behinds. And while plowing furry backsides may sound like the pinnacle of human innovation, someone from Marienburg had the bright idea of hauling a ship of the line onto land and putting wheels on it. 
The Marienburg Landship is a mobile fortress with cannons on all sides and a crew of scallywags firing from the rigging, which despite its name is not a venereal disease, though they almost certainly all have one. When these dirty sailors are done going port to port, they can send their enemies to Davy Jones' locker with the abandoned ship ability, which is less an ability and more just what happens when a box stuffed full of explosives catches on fire. Knights of the Black Rose are the outlier unit for Elspeth, more obsessed with death and dark eyeliner for their horses than innovation. Founded in the darkest days of the Black Plague, this heavily armored cavalry unit are melee specialists who excel at prolonged combat without the need to cycle charge in and out, locking down enemies with long-winded rants about Magic the Gathering while your tanks swoop in to offer them the sweet release of death just to escape you. All of these were put to spectacular usage, because after seven days of siege, Tamarkin's forces had failed to breach the walls of Nuln. Like a spoiled child, when he lost the battle, he decided to take his game home so no one else could play it, sacrificing every mortal in his own army to start a nightmarish ritual to open a gate to the realm of Nurgle and flood the world with demons. Because if there's one thing you should know about chaos, it's that they're all sore losers. Unable to get to the ritual site in time, Elspeth used her fast travel to teleport the army of Nuln directly to Tamarkin, arriving for the final battle atop a Carmine dragon, which she unlocks at level 20 in-game. It has a special breath attack taken straight from Shin Godzilla that despite what you may have heard is not appropriate for children, something my five-year-old's nightmares will attest to. One dark wizard and a bunch of cannons may have stopped Tamarkin's army, but it took all Elspeth's cunning to end the ritual which she only managed by totally sacrificing an ally by giving him a magical amulet for protection, knowing full well that he couldn't beat Tamarkin so that when he did die, it would blow up and kill them both. Which is dark even for a lady whose midnight curtains match her moonless drapes. But it got the job done. Tamarkin died and the portal collapsed in on itself, taking the Chaos Host and the army of Nuln with it. Her energy spent, Elspeth then faded into a shadow and disappeared, shuffling off her mortal coil for a well-deserved reward. Except this is Elspeth von Draken, who even makes Death ask for permission first. Otherwise, he gets the clamps again. Years later, she was seen abroad with her pale and youthful aspects restored, because even Saish can appreciate the dark art of keeping it tight in your 140s. So throw out your old wardrobe, go monochromatic, and become the Empire's darkest wizard to dominate the winds of magic, and drive back death itself as you become the shadow champion of the Empire. Fire up the production lines, roll out the cannons, and apply your black eyeliner and don those combat boots. Because no, this isn't just a phase, Mom. It's a noob's guide to Elspeth von Draken. Thanks for watching, and if you laughed at any of these jokes here, please subscribe to the channel or check out our Noob's Guide playlist. You can always hop in the Discord and talk about the video or join the Patreon and support in their production. There's plenty more where this came from.